Seven family members of personnel have benefited in the Nigerian Army medical evo evacuation both within and outside the country. Currently, there are 12 patients and 12 escorts in India receiving treatments. Most of these are casualties from the Northeast. The Nigerian Army has also hosted over 300 local and international conferences, seminars or summits, either solely or in conjunction with other bodies. One of these was the successful co-hosting of the African Land Forces Summit in conjunction with the United States Army Africa. This conference had in attendance over 43 army chiefs within Africa, as well as Army Stroke Defense Staff from the United States of America, Brazil, Canada, France, United Kingdom, and North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The African Land Forces Summit provided an arena for African Army chiefs and defense experts to discuss operations and strategies that will strengthen African defense and security. The deliberations during the African Land Forces Summit gave us a new approach towards tackling some of the security challenges in our country. We are grateful to Mr. President for granting approval for the Nigerian Army to host this very important conference. In the course of 2018, the Nigerian Army has consolidated on its drive in the area of research and development in order to improve on our homegrown capacity to innovate, produce, and maintain some of our core requirements. In this regard, we have encouraged and supported all Nigerian Army officers and soldiers who have innovative ideas and competencies. We have also resumed full collaboration with the Defense Industries Corporation for needed parts and small arms and ammunition. We have so far gotten the delivery of over 5 million rounds of 7.62 millimeter by 39 special. This is a great stride in the defense complex or defense industrial complex. We thank you, Mr. President. Similarly, the Nigerian Army is partnering with several companies in Nigeria, including Innocent Motors, Proforce Limited, and Nigeria Machine Tools, among others towards the production of light and heavy armored vehicles, critical equipment, as well as protective clothing for Nigerian Army troops. These collaborations have led to the development of what we call the TYB rover, the infantry patrol vehicle, and the Bionbion helicopter, among several other equipment. We are also engaging some foreign technical companies and original equipment manufacturers to help us repair and refurbish some of our heavier and more delicate platforms. These in-house efforts are being done to complement the support that we have received from the federal government in the area of equipment procurement. So far, the Nigerian Army has taken delivery of several quantities of platforms, ammunition, and other needed equipment for the Nigerian Army. And of course, who will see need more. I want to seize this opportunity to thank Mr. President for approving the purchase of this equipment. <laughs> the year 2018 has been eventful, and my address will not be complete without mentioning some of the new developments that have taken place within the year. The Nigerian Army established the Nigerian Army Women Corps to develop female officers and soldiers that can be employed to optimize their capabilities. The Nigerian Army University Bureau has been approved, established, and has commenced its academic programs. The Nigerian Army Vehicle Manufacturing Company was also established to support our strides in vehicle manufacturing. The Nigerian Army has also commenced direct training for personnel to acquire 
sufficient knowledge and communication skills in the three major Nigerian languages to better fit in anywhere they may be deployed. The Nigerian Army has also established the first ever cyber command. The command will effectively tackle the fake news against the Nigerian Army and the country and also secure our cyber domain from hostile elements. In spite of our very many successes, the Nigerian Army is not without its challenges and setbacks. Despite the recent setback in Metele, our successes still manifest from our operations in the central parts of the country up to the northern fringes of Borno State. You will notice that 157 Battalion, located in Metele, which was recently dislodged, unfortunately, with some casualties. This unit is equally part of the Multinational Joint Task Force. And all efforts have been made by the Multinational Joint Task Force efforts to ensure the complete welfare of the casualties as well as its effective operationalization. The presentation that will be made in a few minutes will bring out graphically our successes. Some, some of the Nigerian Army challenges are related to insinuations of human rights abuses, which have tended to dent our image in the eyes of the general public and the international community. It is necessary to reiterate the Nigerian Army stance as professionals that we are guided by the external rules of safeguarding human rights, human security, and human dignity under the concept of the responsibility to protect. To this end, we have established human rights desk offices in all Nigerian Army formations for speedy attention to human rights allegations. Furthermore, just last week, the Nigerian Army Law Seminar was held by the Directorate of Legal Services Army with the theme, the place of the law in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations in Nigeria. The major objective of the law seminar was to improve on the existing synergy between the Nigerian Army Legal Services and the Nigerian Judiciary, bringing to fore a better understand, understanding and appreciation of the specialist and technical nature of military operations vis-a-vis -vis the law to our civilian legal professionals in the judiciary. At this point, permit me to implore all of us to spare a thought for the brave men and women of the Nigerian army who paid the supreme price for the security of Nigeria. We must also continue to support the families of these brave officers and soldiers and pray that their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. The Nigerian Army is looking ahead into the year 2019. We envisage in our projections the planning and conduct of exercises and operations in various parts of the country similar to the ones conducted throughout this year. Training shall be vigorously pursued at all levels as our professional calling of duty demands. The exercises and operations embarked upon this year, 2018, were geared towards creating a peaceful and stable environment for the upcoming 2019 general elections. I wish to state that my projections for the Nigerian Army in the coming year are expected to surpass the achievements of this year, 2018. The areas observed with lapses will be improved upon, and I charge all participants of this esteemed conference to please make meaningful contributions that will be added to our overall projections for the year 2019. The Nigerian Army could not have attained this feat without the support of our political leaders. Cooperation from sister services and other organizations. Accordingly, I wish to recognize and express my sincere gratitude to Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, 
of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari. I want to also appreciate my Honorable Minister, the Minister of Defense, and indeed other ministers, the Chief of Defense Staff, and my colleagues, service chiefs, serving and retired as well as heads of other security agencies and the media. I cannot also thank members of National Assembly enough, especially our committees on Army and Defense, and Defense in both chambers. We sincerely thank you for all your oversight functions. I sincerely wish to thank law-abiding and concerned Nigerians, public, the Nigerian public, for their support to the Nigerian Army. My sincere and esteemed appreciation goes to His Excellency, the Executive Governor, the government, and the good people of Borno State for hosting the Nigerian Army to this conference, as well as supporting the Nigerian Army in his endeavors. I want to enjoin you, Your Excellency, to continue to partner with the Nigerian Army and encourage law-abiding citizens to have confidence in the nation's security agencies. May I also thank the governors here represented for finding time to honor our invitation. For our esteemed royal fathers, we sincerely appreciate you all for your fatherly guidance and for being highly responsible custodians of the people's culture and traditions. The Nigerian army will continue to respect the traditional institutions towards effective civil military relations. Finally, it is, it is with a high sense of responsibility and respect that I humbly express the Nigerian army's profound gratitude once again to the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, for his invaluable support to the Nigerian Armed Forces in general and to the Nigerian Army in particular. On behalf of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, I once more pledge our total commitment to the defense of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and indeed our unflinching loyalty. I wish to respectfully reassure Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief, that we will remain resolute and, commitment, and committed to the defense of the democratic governance of Nigeria. The Nigerian Army will continue to remain apolitical, professional, and responsive in the discharge of its constitutional roles. On the final note, I want to once again welcome you all to the Chief of Army Staff's Annual Conference 2018. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful uh, welcome address. May that was I... the welcome address from the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf. Burata is speaking there about a lot of things that have happened in 2018 and the plans 